all these moments that things could have been done differently and weren't. We'll have another Ebola epidemic, but we, we should never have a transnational epidemic that's out of control. That would be unforgivable. The trouble is, is that everybody forgets disasters until the next one happens. The Ebola outbreak that began in 2013 has killed over 11,000 people, infecting more than 30,000. The World Health Organization and others have been widely criticized for not heeding the call faster. There was no institutionalized global response. The response was tremendously slow, disappointingly slow. Who is there all the time? MSF. MSF, or Doctors Without Borders, first reported the outbreak in March of 2014. We're used to being there when other people aren't, so that's okay. But we knew that things were different, and we spoke about it. We said it was different. Doctors Without Borders told the UN they're overwhelmed. Facing an epidemic of an extent that's never been seen. It would help if the governments and other actors could bring more resources. This is the biggest and the most unprecedented Ebola epidemic that we have seen. Many people didn't listen when we said, this is different. People said, no, no, you know, it'll go away. And so the disease got the upper hand, and it shouldn't have been that way. One major difference was that the disease wasn't geographically isolated. It quickly made it to Guinea's capital and from there spread across the region. Darren Portnoy, who's been with MSF for almost 20 years, went to Liberia to respond. The situation there was, it was dire, it was, it was desperate. Every single bed in the facility was full. Dr. Portnoy arrived in October 2014. I had uh, a family where the, the father was a traditional healer. He came in with his pregnant wife and three children. And uh, his, uh, his wife uh, died first. Her husband died uh, two days later. And then both of his other two daughters died with only one, a three-year-old, remaining. And I, I made uh, I added a, a um, a really awful effect on our team and certainly on me. And it, it goes back to one of these, these lessons that we've learned, which is that the absence of a, a proven treatment for Ebola is, is shameful and disappointing. What I also saw was a, a complete collapse of a healthcare system. There was no hospital, no clinic that was open. All resources were being diverted to Ebola treatment. I mean, large numbers of people who should have been vaccinated, a whole variety of routine but important things will come to a standstill. Now imagine if MSF hadn't responded, if this organization didn't exist or step up. It is really scary that we rely on a not-for-profit, you know, volunteer organization to be doing something that the world should be organized to do. This is not something that um, an international medical humanitarian organization should be taking the lead on. We need to have at least, at least, an organized, well-funded, well-sourced global response team. Like a National Guard, but global and for public health. That are there all the time, you know, like an army is, sharpening their skills. I mean, we have that for wars against other people. We don't have it for wars against bugs and disasters, and we really should. It should be so obvious to decision makers, to international organizations, to disease prevention agencies that we are not prepared. We're not prepared.